This is the world's cheapest film. I honestly don't even know what it is. This little roll of film cost me 15 Chinese yuan, which in American dollars, that's $2.14. How is this even possible? I'm thinking, it looks like it's color film, says C41. Um, I have no idea how many exposures are gonna be on this thing. The canister feels very chintzy and like, I don't know, hacked together, but you know what? It's got film in it, so I'm gonna go take a look and see if we can shoot this thing. Let's choose what camera we should put this thing in. I'm kind of thinking that we should shoot this in the Fujika. With the film loaded, we hopped on the scoot and decided to just ride north without any location in mind. The plan was just to see what we saw and stop whenever we found something to photograph. The ISO rating on the film said 400 to 800, so I opted to shoot it at 400 and just hope that I didn't completely blow everything out. The first place we stopped really didn't have much to photograph, but let's take a look at these first images and see what this film is all about. This first shot of looking through a fence hole at a toll booth, honestly, I do really like it. It kind of looks like the hole was somehow burned into the film and has kind of a cool look to it. The first thing I'm noticing is the massive red color cast. This road here is slate gray in real life, and look how red it is in the film. I'm pretty happy with the color of the sky though. It's got a nice, not overly saturated feeling to it. Then we come to this image of an abandoned building. I like the composition with the curve of the barrier leading you to the dilapidated building and then the modern high rises in the background, but the shadows, oh the shadows, look how tinted they are. There is so much blue and magenta in them. You can really see the grain of the film in them as well and I'm just not in love with the sky on this one. It's a little bit more gray and kind of just opaque. We tried to follow the kites and see who was flying them, but we never could. So we got back on the scooter and eventually found our way back to a beautiful park here in Beijing. This first shot looking through the aspen trees and I don't even know what to say. This film is all over the place. Some images are super heavy in the red spectrum, but then there's this one that's just super green and it's like a weird, almost minty green. I think there's a lot of blue getting into the shadows and mixing with the green, and that's kind of why it's showing up minty. I do like the sun flare. I think that came out nice, and I'm impressed that the film was able to handle the bright highlights of the sun, as well as retain a fair amount of detail in the shadow. So, good job, film. There is some unique artifacting that you can see here kind of snaking its way through the image, and I think I have an idea about what's causing it. More on that later. I am really happy with how this image of the flower came out. I think it's got good color reproduction. I really like the tone of the greens in the background, and I definitely like the way that the reds are coming through on the flower. But then we come to this image, the symposium of chaos and confusion. So I love the bright flare and the way it seems to mush over the entire image, giving it this dreamy fantasy effect I think the subject, which is this little plant, actually looks pretty good. It's got good highlights and is reasonably sharp. Then there is this, which it's got to be a thumbprint, right? At first, I was really mad about it, and then as I've looked at it more and more, I actually kinda like it. And yeah, I get that technically it's messed up, and I would be super annoyed if this image was for a client or a real project, but hey, it's not. And honestly, I kind of like the swirls, they're fun. So what even is this film, and why is it so cheap? As for the price, here's how it really stacks up. You can grab a roll of Portra 800 for about $18. You get 36 exposures, so that equals out to roughly 50 cents per frame. With the mystery cheap Chinese film, it's $2.14 for 10 exposures. So that means it's roughly 21 cents per exposure, which really isn't that much of a difference. It's only about half the price per exposure than Portra, and probably only a quarter is good. Maybe even an eighth is good. Some of these images are pretty bad. So is it worth it? 
well, I doubt I'm ever going to shoot it again. But if you have a half frame camera like the Ektar H35 or the new Pentax, then you could get 20 exposures out of the little roll. Maybe then it's worth it, I'm not sure. This roll of mystery film certainly has some fun aspects to it though. I like the bright fuzziness and the highlights that you can see here on the yellow bike. I do think the greens are pretty saucy and have a good moody feeling to them. This image of the apartment building I think is the best overall image. Not my favorite, but the best in terms of technical reproduction of the subject. I love the way the light looks on the building. We have good detail in the shadows. The sky leaves a little something to be desired, but overall not bad for 20 cents. This image of the sweeping path through the trees with a small person walking through the frame way down at the very end is probably my favorite image from the roll. I love the coloring, although it does lean a little bit too much green in some of the shadows, but I love the contrast and the feeling of it. Our last image was me trying to get a reflection shot looking up at a street light. And yeah, it worked, but it's not great. So what do you guys think about the film? Kick it or keep it? It was definitely a fun experiment. Does anybody else want to try shooting this random roll of film? Leave a comment below and maybe I'll send you a roll.